Hey everyone, Lon Productions here, and today I'm going to be going over all of the controls in Gunner Heat BC. It is the Steam demo version right now. This is as of June 24th, 2022. So this may be out of date <laughs> within a month, who knows, the game does update pretty frequently. But for the most part, these controls have stayed the same since the release of the uh, not Steam demo version, just like a year ago. So anyways, there's a lot of controls to go through, so I'm going to get right into it. First off, just a few miscellaneous ones. To swap between the allied vehicles, you press tab. So if I press tab, I'm now into another tank, another tank, or uh, IFE, whatever. And to go backwards is control tab or left control tab, and this will cycle backwards. So you can only cycle between the allied vehicles. Because this is the proven grounds or basically test range, I can control all of the vehicles. But if this was like a campaign game or something like that where you're facing AI enemies, and you can only cycle between the allied vehicles on your team. The next one is to show and hide the controls by pressing F1 or holding F1. So you might think, well, why am I even watching this video? Let me just look at these controls. Well, there are actually controls that are not shown in here, which I did not figure out for a while until I went to their website. And a lot, or some of these don't make that much sense. So Dumpley, Delta D, Commander Aim, I'm going to be going through all of these, what they all mean, what they all do, and stuff like that. So you can look this like as a quick reference, but this doesn't show everything. To adjust the time scale, we can see in the left hand corner of the screen it says time scale one times. So if I press minus, and this will slow it down. I believe this is uh, one half of the previous number, so this is the slowest we can go, which is very slow. You can actually see the round exiting the barrel there, which is pretty cool. And to speed it up, we can only go to one times. You can't speed up any further than just normal speed, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. To move, it's the, as always, W, A, S, and D. So W is forwards. And I guess it's easier to think about it, think about it like this. Uh, w is both tracks forward. S is both tracks backwards. A is right track forward. And D is left track forward. Of course, you know, this is the opposite when you... Uh, when you back up, but it doesn't have both tracks moving in opposite directions like some games might because this is more of like a realistic tank move. It might feel a little bit more sluggish, it might feel a little slow, and you might like slide around sometimes, but it is more realistic. And there's also cruise control. So cruise control is on the numpad plus and minus. I've never used this inside the game before really uh, on purpose, and so pressing plus it's, um, my hands are off the keyboard and it's going to go as fast as it can. Currently, 26.7 kilometers an hour. I press minus and it will slow down in increments. I don't think this is the gears, like uh, gearing up, getting down. It's just an increment of kilometers an hour. But, anyways, to zoom in and out of the camera, this is in third person and first person, whatever, is scroll. So I can zoom out pretty far and when I look up enough, it's kind of like War Thunder where it just moves your camera up more and I look down enough and I'll just lock it at a certain height. You can swap the view, uh, go to the commander's view by pressing C. So here I'm on top of the cupola and I can actually also zoom in here too. So it only goes up one or goes in one and this is really handy if you don't want to look in the sight of the gun but you also want to look around this is what you can do. They say this is like binoculars, which they haven't modeled in, it just kind of, it just looks zoomed in, but I'm sure they'll model that eventually. To look around the, or to move the guns around, you hold right click, so you can see that little symbol or symbology in the middle, that means that you're now controlling the gun, so it's going to control all axes, it's just going to go to where you're looking, there you go. Some tanks, like the T-55, you can just click. See, so yeah, I just right click right there and it will go right to it. I don't think this is a feature. I think this is just a bug. I it I remember it being on the T72 before and it's not anymore, so I'm just going to assume this is a bug, but I forgot to let you know. To aim into the sights, the gun sights, I press shift, left shift, and now I'm inside of the gun sight. So to look around on this, it isn't like normal. I'm moving around my mouse is not doing anything. Instead, you have to hold right click and then you move it and this is controlling not the exact position but the velocity or the speed of which the gun is moving in any which direction so you can see this arrow in the center kind of indicates that what my speed is you can disable this in the settings 
but this is actually really helpful. You might think this is just annoying, but it is really helpful. For example, if I wanted to track this target, I can zoom in with scroll. I can zoom in one more. I can just match up the speeds, and now I'm not moving my mouse at all, and I'm perfectly tracking this. And this is really handy. It's not as... It might take a little bit getting used to, but trust me, it is for the better. To fire, it is left click, so... There you go, I hit him, left click. To cycle between weapons is left and right bracket. So in the bottom left hand corner, I'll go over this in a second, but it says 105mm if I go right bracket, it'll go to the 50 caliber, and now I'm at the 762. So the 762 is in the gun mantlet right there, and the 50 caliber is right up there. And this is actually independent. It is kind of buggy sometimes, you can see it's not going the direction I want it to. But you can just use this as another gun that can move around. There's no separate sight for the 50 cal, and same with everything else, you only get the one sight. Now something that I have not, or did not figure out for a very long time, which is extremely important, if you press Q, you have this little menu right here. So we've got FCS, which I don't actually know what it stands for, but you can toggle the stabilization, which is a keybind, dump the lead, which is a keybind, laze, which is a keybind, and reset range, which you can just scroll, which I'll get into. Lights, you can toggle the headlights and the convoy lights. The headlights, oh, let me get rid of the menu. The headlights, I believe, they should be the things in the front, and the convoy lights are those red lights in the back. These, all tanks have these. Some, they're more noticeable than others, but the more important one here is this toggle restocking. So if I toggle this, it'll be moving the rounds from just wherever it is in the tank to the ready rack. This is important because you can't just load rounds from anywhere. In the bottom left hand corner, it says 1 plus 8 currently. This is the one load or one round loaded in the gun and the eight rounds ready to be loaded. So once I fire in this case 10 rounds, I'm not going to be able to fire anything more, but there's still rounds in the tank. So you just toggle the restocking and then that will move things into the ready rack for you to be able to shoot. If you want to stop it from restocking, just toggle it again, hence why it's called toggle. So now let's actually go over the bottom left corner as a whole. So we can see this little house thing with a line. The roof of the house is the front of the tank, and the house as a whole is just the tank. So if I move around, you can see the house moving. And the line is the gun, or where it's facing. It doesn't count to affect, like, elevation or anything, it's just the direction. Now let's talk about the bottom left corner text. So at the top, we have the gun caliber, or the specific name of it. The 125mm gun 2A46, that is 125mm in caliber, and is called 125mm gun 2A46. Under that, we have 3BM15 APF SDST 1 plus 13. So, this is the ammunition type and its name, and it is the amounts I have loaded into the gun and the stuff that I have ready to be loaded. So if I swap this to, for example, the 762, we can see this changes everything, and instead it's 200 plus 800. Now under that is direction stabilized. So this one is very interesting. There is direction and there's point stabilization. So this tank has direction stabilized, or is direction stabilized, so you can see I'm moving around the tank, and the barrel is staying in the same direction. If I look at this tank right here, and I move backwards, you can see it's not tracking the tank or anything, but it's still moving in the same direction. Now if I swap to the M60, which has point stabilization, this one's very interesting. So if I look at this tank, the same tank, and then I'll rotate so I'm more perpendicular to it, and I'm going to move forward, you can see it's more looking straight towards it. It's not quite... Uh, drifting as it was in the T-72, but it's still it's still drifting a little bit, but it's more tracking it. And this is because it is tracking a point at the end of the range. So in the bottom left hand corner where it says 1200 meters, the ammunition that I'm shooting, if I shoot it right now, it will land perfectly at the crosshair site 1200, if it's 1200 meters away. So if I press E to laze, now where we've lased the target that we're looking at, it is 993 meters away, and if I shoot, it will land perfectly where I'm aiming, 993 meters away. And this point, 993 meters away, it is 
tracking this point, hence point stabilization. So if I move now, it is now tracking it perfectly instead of just kind of drifting a little bit. And you can see this also if I decrease the range with left control and scroll wheel, now it's only 200 meters. And now it looks like it's doing some weird stuff, and this is because it's looking 200 meters away and tracking a point 200 meters away. Now next thing, I kind of skipped it, but stabilizer is on, you can press L, and now the stabilizer is off. The stabilizer is just the vertical stabilizer, so when I move forwards and backwards, we can really see this. If I turn, I've, if I keep it off, you can see the gun is kind of shifting up and down, it's like stuck. And if I press L to enable the stabilizer, you can see it is perfectly level. That is the vertical stabilizer, and the horizontal one would technically be like the directional point stabilization. Now the next one is Delta D and Dump Lee, which is controlled by left control and E, so I'm going to swap back to the T-72. Because this one has Delta D, so you can see in the bottom left it says Delta D disabled. And let's go ahead, let's look at the same tank, and I'm going to press E to laze right on it. The lazing in the T-72 is re in reference to that red circle, it is not the crosshair itself. It is the red circle, so be sure to remember that. Anyways, if I back up, you can see the range is actually increasing. The Delta D means that it's going to adjust the range based on like how close you are or how much you've moved in relation to it. So this is not really something I've used a whole lot just because I haven't moved a whole lot while I'm shooting, but it is still a helpful thing. And then going back to the M60, this one has, this one I can demonstrate the bleed. So if I go ahead and laze this orange target back there, it's 1,112 meters away. I'll go ahead and use the uh, nice aiming that this game has, and I'll just perfectly track it. Now if I shoot, you can see it misses it, because I need to lead the target. It takes time for the, uh, for the... It takes time for the round to travel to where I'm aiming, so what I'm instead going to do is I'm going to keep tracking it. I'm going to press E, and that moves the crosshair to the right, and I'm going to fire again, and it's going to perfectly hit where I was aiming based on the range and velocity of, or speed of the gun moving to begin with. So if I, if I go at a completely faster speed and I press E, you can see that it moves it way to the right, or if I go at a really slow speed, it moves it not that much. And this is just automatically leading the target for you, which I find is really, really helpful. Now, where does the left control and E come into play? It just enables and disables the Delta D or the lead. You can, it just automatically removes the lead if you just stop aiming. If I let go or right click, it gets rid of it. With Delta D, you have to press, or press left control and E in order to disable or enable it. But if I was aiming like this, I'll see moving around and I didn't want to let go of the aim button. I'm just going to press left control and E and there it goes. Centers it on the screen again. So the next one, I'm actually going to swap to Night 4. Actually, to begin with, I'll just stay in the M60 and press T. This enables the thermal vision, or it's technically also the night vision in this tank. It doesn't have a designated night vision, it just has thermals. And the kind of bottom right-ish, it says white hot. The WHD stands for white, and this basically means the hot objects, based on their thermal signature, are going to appear more white than everything else, and the darker things are going to be more black than everything else, hence why the fours is kind of like this darkish green, and these targets, the orange targets, are going to be, going to be white, but the tanks, if they were alive, they would be really bright white, so if I go to the right and look at the still living tanks, you can see just how bright they are, they stick out like a sore thumb, in the middle of the forest, hence why they're so, or hence why thermals are so nice to have. The other instance of this would be like black hot. It's usually a grayscale vision, like white hot or black hot, and black hot just inverts white hot, so it'd be black hotter objects, white colder objects. Now, an interesting one is the Bradley. So the Bradley, I don't know why they chose this, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. It's actually red and pink. So it still applies white, whiter objects are hotter, so it just appears more pink, but it's red thermal stain instead of green. I believe this is just because of the materials they use to, like, as the sensor for the thermal signature. 
Let's go to night by pressing comma or period or more so uh, greater than or less than. So I'm going to press period and it's going to cycle the time forwards. I'm going to stop to the T55A. This will do for now. So you can see in the commander view, I actually have some pretty limited but still night vision goggles. This is a somewhat new addition, but you can also see the convoy lights. So you can see those two green lights and the red lights in the back. Those are the convoy lights. If I disable them, you can see right there. If I toggle the headlights, uh, it does not appear to be modeled, but there is, there is the headlight. And if I toggle the spotlight, we cannot see anything. So you see that little red uh, circle. So this is the eye that's always very iconic to the T-72 tanks or the Russian METs. This is the thermal, or not thermal, this is the night vision. So if I go into the site and then I press T, this will bring up this. It doesn't look, or it looks completely different. I don't see anything because this tank does not have, or the Russian, technically I think it's German tanks, don't have thermal vision. They have night vision and it's using a spotlight. So if I look down a little bit and now I'm looking at the ground, you can kind of see it. But then if I press N, this will light up the spotlight. So you can't see this in third person because it's not in the visible uh, light spectrum that we can see, but it is lighting up the objects and the and the night sight that we are activating by pressing T, that is basically what can see this spotlight. It is not detecting any thermal signatures you can see, it's just making it brighter. And this is essentially a stealthy spotlight. It gets, it's brighter, the closer it is, it's dimmer the further away it is. And if I wanted to, if I go back to the normal sight, and this has, you know, all the important information for ranging, if I press I, and this will make it nice and orange and red. So you can't see what you're aiming at, but you can see how to aim. And the T-55, it's it's hard to explain. You just have to go to their website in order to understand this. If I stay in here and then I put the time of day back to day, see so it gets bright and then it, un it covers it again because this, you know, it's a, it's a sensitive thing. So if I go back to day, you can see it covers and uncovers it. And going to the T-72, if I go cycle or go back and forth, you can see the night vision stuff covering and uncovering themselves. So some last rapid fire random things. We've got the commander aim, which is by pressing space. This is not something you can do in the range or in this test range, but it is basically in the campaign where your commander calls out something like it says tank right or something like that. If you press space, it will move your tar or move your, your gun crosshair directly to where he was looking at. It's kind of cheaty, but it's helpful if you just have no clue where anything is. To mute the gun and crew and engine, you just press single quotation mark. It's... I don't know why you'd want to do this, but it's there. F11 is to take a screenshot. To end the mission, you press end. This will bring up this screen. I won't go over any, go over any controls here just because it's self-explanatory. It shows you everything. But this white line is the path that the round took. And then this kind of red, orange, yellow stuff. That is the spall or the shrapnel from the shell. And you can see the very nice models inside the tank. So we can see all the ammunition, the components, everything that can be damaged is modeled here. Now I'm going to restart the level because there's still some more things. If I press O, this will enable the x-ray. This is also for the end overlay or whatever but you can see all the ammunition here for example if i shoot you should be able to see in the ready rack around disappear there we go by pressing f3 i will enable the free cam wsnd moves around space goes up control left control goes down to increase or decrease the speed a scroll wheel so here we go i can go really fast or extremely slow and if you want to smooth out the camera for like some cinematic shots, just hold right click. And there we go, it's nice and smooth. A little framey, I don't know why that is. Now to zoom in and out, you press lift, shift, and scroll wheel. And here we go, I can zoom in really far. To reset the zoom, I press X. And while in third person, you can actually still fire. So if you press left, shift, and left click, you'll fire the current selected weapon. There we go. So if I zoom out again, you can do it again. It's pretty cool for some pretty cool shots. Going back 
to the tank itself. If I press F4, uh, or for wherever I'm looking, I press F4, it'll set a waypoint for the tank to drive. This is more of like dev stuff. I don't think this is supposed to be like in a fully implemented feature, but with pathfinding too, it'll actually go around tanks and stuff. This is handy when you're in the campaign and you have a bunch of AI teammates and they just want to kill themselves as soon as possible. You can just press F4 and F5 to designate themselves a path to take. F5 just sets the next waypoint in a series and it will try its best to follow the path. You can see here it's kind of struggling. Previously, if you did left control and F4, this would set a target. I don't know why it's going backwards. It would select a waypoint that has no pathfinding, so it just goes straight to it. It does not do that now. You can see it's trying to go around the tanks. And then lastly, to hide the HUD, this does break some things. I don't know if they fixed some of those things that it broke, but left control and F1 will hide the HUD. But either way, that is it for the controls in this game. As of, again, June 24th, 2022 this is the steam demo version it's the first time they released it on steam it's very exciting and hopefully this game has a bright future ahead of us anyways if this if the controls ever go out of date something like that then i will be sure to update this and anyways thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one